and welcome to this virtual lecture for Digital MD. My name is Vincent Fu. I'm a current medical student at the University of Colorado and also a co creator of this curriculum. Throughout our course so far, I hope your experience has been positive and that you've been able to explore how digital literacy in social media and educational design play an important role in being a modern physician. To give you some context, I've been doing digital media design for about 10 years now, first starting in high school and then further developing my skills in college and now medical school. Three years ago, I also founded my own design company called Arctic Fox. Despite studying biology in college, I've always been drawn to being digitally creative and developing my digital literacy skill set. One might say that a student in science or medicine has no need for these skills, but I found in my experience that digital literacy is a way of thinking. The key lies not in what I've been creating specifically, but in the way of thinking that I've been trained to have through being creative. And a great example of applying visual thinking to a science background was when I created my research presentation poster for my biology degree. This is a poster designed completely in Illustrator, including all the charts and diagrams. The central goals were enhanced readability, concise summary of key points, and clear communication of complex scientific data. And this is me presenting that poster in our research symposium in 2017. Clarity of communication for complex concepts was what made this a success. And this demonstrates the importance of digital literacy, even in medicine. After I got into med school at CU, I knew I couldn't stop pursuing this passion. And so I've been creating in the classroom as well. In our problem-based learning sessions, Adobe Spark pages are a great way to present learning topics back to the group. And one week I was feeling extra creative and I made an infographic for my learning objective of antidepressants. I've also had the opportunity to work with the Office of Student Life to completely redesign the student guidebook given to all incoming first years. What was a 60-page Word document before was made into a handy and useful, well-designed piece with the student at the center of the focus. I also created this orientation video for the incoming class, setting the tone for the new year. In third year, while I'm in clinic, the utility of these skills continues through creating graphics for research and collateral for patient education. And so with this background, combined with Dr. Matt Zuckerman's expertise in medical education, this course was created. You are part of an innovative movement to make the doctors of tomorrow ready to take on challenges of telehealth, social media engagement, and public advocacy, things that have become increasingly important and suddenly relevant in our pandemic world. You are also the focus of great interest nationwide among the community of med ed educators and the creative community as well. People are fascinated by doctors becoming digitally literate for the future. And so along with the tools and concepts that you learn in this course, I hope to share with you exactly why and how you should start thinking about your personal brand as a digital MD. So the first question might be, why build a brand? Your brand is who you are and what you portray to the world. Figuring this out will be helpful in every aspect of your life. And no matter what your interests or field of work, such as being a doctor, a strong personal brand is key. A lot of people will say, oh, we're not in a design or creative field, so we don't need to worry about a personal brand or anything like that. But in this world, our success depends on how well we can market ourselves. What exactly are you doing when you walk into a residency or job interview? You're selling your personal brand. And so let's say you've walked into an interview, you've shaken hands and exchanged pleasantries. And the first question you get asked is, tell me about yourself. Now, this is the hardest question to answer if you don't have an idea of what your personal brand is. And so building your brand does five things. First, it helps you clarify how you're different. Now, of course, this is kind of professional cliche, but it's what will get you in the door. Your personal brand is what separates you and makes you special from the rest of the crowd. What makes you unique? What do you bring to the table that others don't? And building your personal brand will also help you figure out how you're different and embrace it. The more you think about your brand and the more you let it represent your whole and authentic self, the easier it will be to point out exactly how you're different from others and the value that you will bring to an organization or uh, institution. 
Building your brand also builds your self awareness. The most successful professionals have a deep self awareness, which means that they understand their workflow process, leadership style, and strengths. People don't necessarily care what you've done so much as if you understand what you've learned from those experiences. If you can articulate your creative process or how you get things done, as well as your leadership style and strengths, you are already telling people what makes you different. The third thing is it gets you recognition and validation. Having a brand puts you and your many accomplishments out into the world. When you walk around your workplace and people want to chat and say hi, it feels good, right? You're representing your personal brand, whether you realize it or not. The fourth thing is that it gives you power over your career. We all want to find a position that gives us good benefits and lets us do our best work. And your brand conveys what you bring to the table when you join an organization or institution. By having a solid representation of who you are, you know what strengths you have in your field and how to leverage those skills into a fulfilling and empowering career. The fifth benefit to building your brand is it helps you walk the line. Your current organization wants a team player. Your next organization or institution wants to hire a unique and strong individual. Now, how do you balance between those two? You have to stay true to your authentic self and not sacrifice anything for anyone. Some takeaways. It's up to you to find, invest, and promote your unique value. You want to invest in your current team, but also invest in your full authentic self. Your current institution will be a great springboard for you to get to the next level when the time is right. So you might be wondering, where do I start building my brand? Well, the first step is to figure out your brand vision and how you want to express that. This can be accomplished by thinking in terms of I am statements. And this technique grounds your vision in your passions and your ideal traits. It helps you determine the parts of your life and career that have been most rewarding and why they've been that rewarding. And so as you start to write your I am statements, they should capture who you are and what matters to you. For example, I might write, I am a medical student with a desire to innovate through design thinking. I could also write, I am an individual who understands the experience of being a member of the LGBTQ plus community. And if writing a whole sentence seems hard to you, then try choosing three words that define you. I am a designer, an innovator, and a professional. So in either case, take some time to think about and refine your statements. You will find it challenging to boil down your entire personality into a few sentences or words, but think about it more as a general focus exercise. In general terms, This is who you are. And the takeaway to this is before you do anything, have a clear understanding of who you are and what makes you happy. And that vision is what will guide your brand. So now crafting your brand. Once you understand your vision, you need to craft it into a strong story. Refine your I am statements to be clear, simple, and something people can connect with. Because your brand must be built on your honest self to be authentic and impactful. The worst thing you can do is to say, I am something I'm not. So be genuine, be honest with yourself because it shows. And there's really no magic formula or secret. This work is all up to you. But fortunately, there is a lot of freedom in doing this for yourself as well. Evaluation and evolution of your personal brand is an important thing to think about after you create the initial vision and as you continue to iterate it. Building your brand isn't something that you do just once and then never visit again. You are going to evolve, and so your brand has to evolve with you over time. When I first started thinking about my personal brand about five or six years ago, it was much more basic than what it is now. Every now and then I'll have a personal rebranding where I think about what has changed in my life, what makes me happy now, and what I currently care about. My personal website, for example, has been completely redone three times because of this process, and I'm proud of where it is today because I've struggled and evolved over time. It's also important to remember to not get discouraged by negative or ambivalent reactions. You want to stay true to you. We live in a society where we strive to be accepted by everyone, but not all of us will be able to achieve social media fame like our favorite social media personas have done. Some people out there are just going to be negative, whether because they're jealous or just don't like you. So just acknowledge it and move on with you. 
So the takeaway to here is to build a brand people hate. If you can evoke emotion from someone, that means you are authentic enough and have a strong enough message that some people don't like it. And that's totally okay, because those who do like it are the ones that you want to be around anyway. So we've spent all this time talking about the thought process and theory behind a brand. Let's finally get into how we express and design our brand. So your brand ecosystem needs to do four things. It needs to be consistent. It must be credible, especially true as a physician. It needs to be creative and it needs to be memorable. So keep these four goals in mind as you develop your brand expression. Consistent across all platforms, credible so that it is authentically you, creative so that it shows your personality, and memorable so that it is effective. And so we're going to go into the tools of your personal brand. These are the things that you will use again and again when you're representing your brand to the world. The first thing to think about is to choose a font, a color palette, and a tone of voice. This is your consistent look and feel. And for designers, this is incredibly important. And it may not apply a ton to medicine, for example, but the essence of it is that you want people to associate a certain look and feel with your brand. Even if your choices are pretty standard, stick with it and use it consistently. One thing to consider is to create a logo if you'd like one. So although I didn't study design, I wanted a logo that could represent me as an individual. So my initials here sort of evolved into an origami bird. And this is something that I just use across everything that I do as a sort of consistent branding among all of my activities. You also want to secure social media usernames, URLs, and more that fit with your personal brands. Whatever you decide to go with, you want to make sure that everything is as uniform as possible, because this makes it easy for people to find you across all platforms. For example, I use VinceFox8 across all platforms, and I also own that URL as well. I also claim the vanity plate for my business, so if that's something that you're into, then definitely look into that as well. So one big part of modern personal branding is social media. You can either dive deep into this or not, but there is merit in having an online presence and identity, especially as a modern physician. You want to figure out how you want to use each social media channel. Perhaps you want to focus LinkedIn on professional meetings and milestones, keep Instagram for public facing images, and then maintain Facebook only for close family and friends. It's all up to you, but you want to make those choices beforehand so you can keep it consistent. You also want to separate personal and professional channels. This is pretty obvious in terms of being a medical student because you're representing both yourself and also our school as well. And next up, when you post, you want to go for quality over quantity. Don't pepper your followers with low quality posts and don't follow tons of people. Stick to your niche and produce high quality content. People will naturally come to you. And above all else, make sure that professional profiles are updated and cleaned up. Almost all employers or institutions will Google your name and look through any social media profiles they have access to. You can keep some things public, but lock down any personal or private profiles and be sure to check your tags and associations too. Examine your digital footprint, much like you did towards the beginning of this course, and keep all your profiles updated with the latest information. And again, always keep tabs on what those profiles look like. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about profile pictures and first impressions. It takes just a second to form an impression of someone from a photo, and research in psychology has showed that first impressions are based on the big five unconsciously determines personality traits. This is the leading model of the structure of personality traits, which describes human personality in terms of five dimensions. First, openness, and sometimes it's called intellect. Basically, how approachable is this person? The second is extroversion. Is this person easy to talk to right away? Third, agreeableness. How does this person react in non-ideal situations or when they disagree with someone? The fourth is emotional stability, sometimes contrasted with neuroticism. Basically, you're judging how stable this person looks based on their first impression. And fifth is conscientiousness. Does this person have integrity and dedication to the work that they do? So when you think about your picture, you want to think about these big five traits and how you can best display them to your advantage. 
Finally, the biggest piece of your personal branding toolbox, and the one you should spend the most time on, is your resume and CV. Now, your resume tells your brand story and your history. It's all about you, and it's your opportunity to make a strong impression using one page. And you want to think about your resume like a piece of advertising. You're trying to sell yourself to whatever you're applying to. You are the best product out of all the other choices that they might have. And of course, you want to realize your audience based on discipline or application. Different situations call for different resumes or CVs. And you want to tailor your content and design to each particular audience. Just like an advertising piece, your resume might need to change depending on who is reading it. So for example, this is my resume and my CV. For more design-focused roles where I want to make a strong impact, I use my one-page resume on the left. And for more academic roles where details matter, I use my multi-page CV on the right. And in most cases, I usually bundle both of these and send them together. A few tips for your resume. You want to lead with your most impressive work. This makes sense, of course. You want to take your most impressive recent accomplishments up at the top. The second thing is to keep some form of a document up to date. Too many of us leave a resume alone until it's time to apply for something and then we frantically try to put everything together quickly. Checking in every few months to update a document or after a major milestone in your career makes things much easier when it's time to apply because you can just pull it and send it. The third tip is to not list every single thing you've ever done. You probably have a good sense of this already, but people in med school don't usually care about what happened in high school, and people in residency probably won't care about what happened in college. So you just want to list the most pertinent things to whatever you're applying to. And the fourth tip is to explain your role and contributions. It's not enough to just say, here's what I did. You also want to go into any impacts that you made on the culture, any effects that you've had since then, and any lasting impressions that you've left with that organization or institution. So some takeaways for resumes. The execution of your brand is just as important as the thinking behind it. Show the world that you're a hot commodity with a well thought out and executed brand. And you also want to build out your toolbox so that you're ready for any opportunities that come your way. Your professional reputation depends on how prepared you are for interviews and applications. So if you can quickly turn around something that's very impressive, that will work to your advantage. Some final thoughts on professional reputation and personal branding. Don't be afraid to stand out. I love coming in with a strong impact and a great example in addition to everything that I do, is my resume. In a pile of white pages, it is memorable and stands out. Therefore, recruiters and evaluators are more likely to remember the impact and me. Your professional reputation is what you make of it. Only you have the power to form your professional reputation, so don't ignore it. To share a bit more about my personal brand and how I think about my professional career, I wanted to share the three pillars of my brand, design, fitness, and medicine. So a couple years ago, I decided to stop making New Year's resolutions and start thinking in terms of themes. Instead of only setting a goal or two, I set a theme for the year that guides everything that I do. So in 2018, my theme was Year of Focus, in which I truly asked myself what mattered to me and what I needed to do to prepare myself for medical school. I started a new life in Denver that year and successfully focused my life into my future professional career as a physician. In 2019, my theme was Year of Balance. I realized that I don't just have to be a doctor or just have to be a design professional. And so, both last year and this year, I'm striving for growth in each of these sub-brands. Only through finding balance among these priorities can I achieve my goals in each. Therefore, my brand has a chance to evolve from year to year, as I do. And a final thought to leave you with, my favorite quote. We shouldn't be afraid to represent our authentic and whole selves in our brands. You have struggled to find who you are. Now be proud of it and do amazing things as a future physician. And here's my contact information. I love to connect with people, so please feel free to reach out anytime. Thanks so much for your attention throughout this lecture. I hope that you've learned something and that you have some tools to start building your personal brand. And I hope that Digital MD continues to be a useful curriculum for you.
Take care.